Hey, so in my last book haul video, I promised I was going to do a video about some of my favorite books uh, of 2017. Um, I'm just going to show them off and talk about them. Um, I am going to be talking about the ones that were in my Top 10 Tuesday post from a few weeks ago, I think. Yeah, a few weeks ago. Um, and I don't own all of those, and some of my very favorites I, knew, I unfortunately left at school because um, I didn't know I was doing this video at that point, so I didn't think to bring them home when I came for break. But I do have 10 of them. I think I have like 17. This was not a good year for loving books, y'all. I mean, I know a lot of people had lots of favorites, but I unfortunately didn't. Um, but I'm going to feature 10, and I'm going to give you guys kind of like a quick synopsis of them, maybe, or maybe kind of like why I like them, things like that. So, my first favorite of the year was Piecing Me Together by Renee Watson. This um, is by the author of This Side of Home, which I love. I think I had an arc of that like, back in 2014 or something. And it's a good story set in... Por that one's set in Portland. Um, this one's set in... Portland or Seattle? I can't quite remember. Um, but it's about the a, a girl who gets to go to a private school um and she also gets involved in this thing called this mentorship program called women to women woman to woman um and she's kind of i don't know about that um but the style of the book is very like poetic without being like a novel in verse um and i loved how kind of like it focused a lot on the main character jade like her internal struggles and then like her trying to fit into her world and find her place and everything um and there wasn't a romance at all which i'm i love romances in books but sometimes it's nice not to have one so this was a really good book um i know a lot of people have been talking about the hate you give and dear martin and of course those deserve like praise and like you know good reviews and all that but i definitely don't see enough people talking about piecing me together so you all need to read this one it's so good Okay, next is The Names They Gave Us by Emery Lord, and what you're seeing here is that I left my finished copy at school, but I had my arc here at home, which is, I made lots of little annotations on, um, mostly because I was doing a special review of it for a class, um, but then also just because I wanted to share, like, little thoughts and quotes and things I liked. Um, I've loved Emery's books for so long. Like, I was there when Open Road Summer was published, which was her debut, and I was there, I got to review The Start of Me and You, and When We Collided, and I got an arc of this one, and I just fell in love with it. Like, I, it's got a gorgeous cover, which is definitely indicative of, like, the content within, of how good it is, um, but it's about cancer, and faith, and friendship, and reconciling like who you were with who you are now and it's just so beautiful and so good um it's I think it's probably tied with the start of me and you for my favorite Emery Lord book um so yeah okay next is The Ship Beyond Time by Heidi Heilig um which is the sequel to her debut novel The Girl From Everywhere um, this came out at the end of February, I think, um, and it's continuing the same world and everything, but what I liked about this one is that whereas The Girl From Everywhere was primarily set in historic Hawaii, this was set more in, like, a made-up fantasy kingdom, which was really cool, um, and I played those things more, and, like, it kind of explored more concepts of time and, like, the choices we make and everything, um, and it's also dual narration, um, as opposed to the first one, which was just Nix's point of view. This one also has, sorry, I'm totally blanking out his name. Kashmir. Kashmir? I'm terrible with names. I don't, I shouldn't be allowed to talk ever. Anyways, so I love that one. I'm excited to see what Heidi writes next. I think it's coming out in September or something, so I'm excited for that. Alright, next is Always and Forever, Lara Jean by Jenny Han, which is the third in the To All the Boys I Left Before trilogy. Um, we thought it was only going to be a duology, and then Jenny wrote a third one, which is really fun. Um, it skips about, I think, about a year in time, um, so it's about the last bit of Lara Jean's senior year, and I love just how much it focused on, like, going off to college and figuring all of that out, and, like, 
knowing where, what you're supposed to do and where you're meant to be, even if it's not, like, with your friends or your boyfriend. Um, and then there's, like, family stuff still, of course, because that's what this trilogy has been really good at, besides the romance. Peter K is pretty cool. So, yeah. If you haven't read the rest of this trilogy, definitely read it. It's fun. It's cute. It's quirky. It's not quite, like, a lot of the YA that's out there right now, so it's definitely a must-read. Okay. Next is... Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I I knew about Francesca's uh, debut novel. This is her sophomore novel. Um, and it didn't, Made You Up didn't really like draw my interest or anything. But I heard about this one, loved the cover, and I'm like, okay, I'll give it a chance, like, see what I think. I bought it without reading it, which is rare for me. I don't usually do that unless it's like an author I've read before or a series I've read before and everything, and I'm pretty sure I'll like it. Um, just because, like, I mean, I want to support authors and everything, but I don't want to regret buying something I didn't like. So I generally like get it from the library first or something and then see if I like it and then I'll buy it. But anyways, I bought this one and I have zero regrets because it is in probably my top five favorites of 2017. It's about a girl with anxiety who creates a webcomic and it's like the webcomic just like becomes super popular so she's basically like a celebrity on the internet except that she's anonymous. Um, she goes by username Lady Constellation. So no one in real life except for maybe probably her parents, um, her brothers, and then two friends she made on a forum website before she released her webcomic. Like she made those friends first and then they all know. But that's it. Um, so it's about anxiety and creation and being creative and like the burnout that can happen and like expectations and everything and it's just it can be a lot, but it's also just, it's such a good book. And, like, if you need to take a break from it, like, you know, because it's just so much, I totally understand. But it's definitely one y'all need to read, especially if you like contemporary, but then also if you like fantasy as well. Because there's little pieces of her comics within, which is super fun. So, yeah. Lies and Her Monsters. I read this book, this next one, um, about five four or five months before it came out. Um, I had an e-galley, I got an e-galley and everything, and I couldn't wait to read it because this author, her debut novel, was I think probably my, in my top two favorites of 2016. So this one though is Not Now, Not Ever by Lily Anderson. Um, it's not really a sequel, it's kind of a companion to her first book, which is The Only Thing Worse Than Me Is You. Um, there's overlap in some of the characters, but the main character was not in the, uh, first book. Um, the love interest was, though, and there's some side characters that were. It's super fun, it's nerdy, it's about smart kids, and, uh, like, a summer camp, and I'm like, what more could you want? And plus there's tons of, like, Oscar Wilde references and everything, because it's basically kind of, it's sort of a retelling of the importance of being earnest. Um, so it's super fun, and cute, and swoony. So you should definitely check it out. Um, it came out just about a month ago, and so I don't think I've seen enough buzz about it. But it's definitely one you all need to read. Okay, next is In a Perfect World by Trish Dollar. Um, I knew about Trish's other books. I didn't feel like they were my thing, so this one wasn't quite on my radar. But then I heard about it, and I was like, oh, I'll check this out from the library. I, should, I might like it, you know, and I want to try something new. And I ended up loving it, y'all. Um, it's about a girl whose mother, um, she's hired to open an eye clinic um, in Cairo, Egypt. And I don't read a lot of books set in Egypt, so that was really cool for me um, to read something set in a different place and to learn about Egyptian culture and how like Islam works there. And then also I think there are some layers of Christianity potentially, but I could be remembering wrong. Um, but it's also then there's a star-crossed romance and everything. And it was just ended up being really good. Like, I liked that there was diversity, but that the main character and everything was still, like, it wasn't, like, a white author writing outside of her lane, necessarily, because the main character is still white. But she managed to, like, feature diversity in other ways. So, I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this one, but you guys definitely need to read it. It's in a perfect world. And isn't that cover pretty? Like, with the, the colors down there, and the birds, and everything. I really like it. Okay, so this next one. I was not expecting to love it at all. Um, I didn't even pre-order it because I didn't want to be let down. Um, but I got it from the library, I think about maybe a month after it came out, maybe a little less. And I ended up loving it. 
it is Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Maas. I'm like I'm I loved the Throne of Glass series when I first started reading it. Um I think I read it early in the year that Air of Fire released. Um and so I loved the first two and Air of Fire kind of got annoyed with Queen of Shadows and Empire Storms like was one of my favorite books of 2016, but I had a lot of problems with it as well. So I really wasn't expecting to like this one, even though Kale is one of my favorite characters from the series. Like, I'm a big Kale and Selena shipper, um, even though I know that they'll never get back together, especially after this book. Um, but I loved all the plot twists. Um, I liked that there was focus on healing and everything. The one that annoyed me is that, like, literally every single, like, couple is getting paired up, and I'm just like, there can be some single characters, you know? Like, just, there can be. It's annoying if there's not. Like, I'm just tired of it. But it's still a solid book. Um, I'm going to be interested to see how it all comes together in Throne of Glass 7, which doesn't come out until, like, September, which is so long. But hopefully that'll be good. I don't think... I don't know. I wish the series had gone a slightly different direction in some ways. And... Yeah, but I couldn't help but love Tower of Dawn, so it's going in my top 10 favorites, I think. Well, this is not quite my top 10 favorites of 2017, this is just 10 of my favorites, because one of my favorites is at school and I can't show it off to you guys, so, yeah. Anyways, okay, so these are two of my most recent, I think these are two out of the three most recent favorites that I've read, um, but these are the last two books in the video. First up is The Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo. This is a collection of fairy tales set in the Grishaverse. Um, there's, I think, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, there's six total. And it was super fun and I loved um, how rich they were and like how it expanded like the world even further. And then I also loved the illustrations. Um, like if you look and see, they kind of, on the first page of the story, they kind of started out like that. And then by the end, they were, like, the very last page of the story, they were, like, this fully expanded, like, picture and everything. And it was just so cool. Um, they put a lot of effort into this, making this book look cool. And I'm so glad they did because I loved it. Which is, there's no surprise there. I love Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, so I was expecting to like this as well. And finally, this is my most recent and probably, well, I don't think, I don't, I'm hoping it won't be my last favorite of 2017. Um, I've got a few more days left to read books, and I've got several planned that I'm hoping that will be new favorites, but I'm not sure. But this is my most recent five-star read. It is Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills. Ugh, this book. I had an arc of it. I read it twice. Um, once for my actual review and then once for an assignment for my advanced creative writing class, um, but I just, I loved the characters, I loved how earnest they were and like how real they were, I liked the focus on friendship and then the romance and then like the focus on like on growing and then there was like theater and it was just fandom and there was just, it was fun, like I love books that there's like, yeah there's problems but they're still fun and they're like, they feel like life. And that's what I think Emma Mills does really well. In, at, does, that's what Emma Mills does really well in her books, um, making them feel like it's real life. I really liked First and Then, which was her debut. I didn't love This Adventure Ends, which everyone else really liked it, so I felt kind of weird. Um, but I just reread it, and I actually liked it more than I did my first read. Not as much as Foolish Hearts, but definitely better than I had before. So I'm glad that, like, it was probably just the space I was in at that time when I first read it that I didn't love as much, but... I may even reread this one before the end of the year just to like end on a really really good note. So we'll see. So yeah, that was 10 of my favorite books for 2017. Let me know if you guys liked any of these or what your other favorites were and if you think I might like them as well. So thanks for watching!